Hey, Hayes Mega here, and welcome to another Hayes Mega Sauron Light B video, alright? And the video tool will be talking about this guy, alright? Rock Shock's Vivid R2C, alright? I've decided I'm not going to use this shock anymore. I'm not very happy with it, alright? So this is kind of Hades Omega's review of this shock, alright? So, um, the, my biggest complaint is it's way too stiff, alright? I put a 500 pound spring on it. That should have been the right spring from, from what people have been telling me. And it's just way too stiff, alright? I'm, I'm breaking spokes. Spokes are pulling out of the hub. I'm bending spokes. I bent a, a bolt here on the triangle doing like big jumps and stuff and it's just not it's just not absorbing anything all right it's just way way too stiff and the front the front is soft it's the, the front is plush is what I want to say it's plush and then the back is just too stiff so it's just um, where the bike was beating my arms up before all right now it's beating my legs up all right and I could feel it I could feel it at the end of the day it's it's painful all right it's painful to jump this bike and ride it through really tough uh, rough terrain all right and so what I wound up doing is I put my old shock back on and saw saw how that was and I was like oh it's it's about as firm as as the front they're they're pretty well matched so I decided I think I'm just gonna stick with that one for now <laughs> okay I also have another brand new one this is the fast ace uh, shock that comes with some of the Saurons all right I, I don't know how I think nowadays they have the DNM burner and they have there's like some KKE shock. They, they've got all sorts of weird shocks on the that come with the Saurons, all right. But this is the one that came with mine. It's a fast ace um, shock absorber, all right. Uh, so I'm kind of saddened because I put a, a lot of money into this, all right. I think I paid like three hundred dollars for it. I still have to buy the spring. I had to import the spring from Poland. So, so yeah, I'm gonna go talk about the stuff that I I. I don't like about it, all right, and that that's why I'm not, um, and that's that's why I think I've decided I'm just gonna probably just sell this and have, maybe somebody else can figure it figure it out. Um, so I did buy it used off of face Facebook Marketplace, all right. Um, it was installed on some other bike previously, and um, and yeah, I'm not very happy with it. Um, and, and it's not only because it's too stiff, all right? Like, I could probably fix that by putting a softer spring in, like a 400 or 450 pound spring, all right? Um, but uh, yeah, if you want to figure out, if you want to learn how Hayes Mega was able to install this onto his bike, I'll put links at the end of the video. But like I said, I kind of, I don't recommend this shock, all right? Um, it's not a very good shock. Um, even, even compared to the Fast Ace one, I, you know, uh, the only thing I think this, this shock has over the fast ace shock is one it has an extra adjustment all right this is a three-way adjustable shock it has a uh, ending and beginning rebound okay um yeah and i i tried playing around with all the adjustments and everything i can't get this shock to get softer all right the only way to make it softer is to go down on the spring rate all right um and then there's a compression adjust right here all right the compression one is the one that's the most important. I would think that one would have two adjustments instead of the rebound. That's what I'd say, okay? So yeah, you've got a beginning adjustment down here. And so, so Hades Mega is, you know, actually don't, I'm not a fan of shocks that have like a whole bunch of adjustments on it, right? Because Hades Mega is not the best at suspension tuning is what I want to say, right? I know there's people that could just bounce a bike up and down and then play around with the clickers and bounce it again. And then they can get it just right, you know? I'm not one of those people. I'm one of those people that I, I have to ride the bike and I was like, oh, you know what? I feel like I want it softer or stiffer and then I just start moving stuff, all right? And that's, that's, that's pretty much how I tune this guy, okay? Uh, but I could I could not get it to get softer, all right. Um, and it's just destroying my bike. It's destroying my bike, and it, it's it's beating me up whenever I ride it. So I've decided I think I'm going to uh, to ditch this guy, all right. Now there may be something wrong with it because I got it second hand, all right, or third hand or fourth. I don't know how many people um, this has been through, all right. Um, so there's a couple things uh, there's a couple things I don't like about it, and we'll um, we'll take a closer look. Um, right now okay okay so here's a close-up of this rock shocks vivid r2c all right so 
it's fairly lightweight shock. It doesn't really weigh that much more than the Fast Taste one. What I don't like, okay, so let's go over some of the stuff that I don't like about it, all right? Just by design, all right? Like I said, I could probably I could probably get this shock to work a little better if I went down on the spring rate, but that's the problem. Finding the springs for these Rock Shock shocks is very difficult, all right? Uh, that nobody stocks stocks this spring, all right, for this size shock, all right? So this is a 500 pound, 3.5 stroke um, spring, all right? And these are very very hard to find. Um, I wish I had gone with the Fox Shock because those the, the springs are much easier to find than the springs for this. The good thing is the springs are fairly inexpensive. They go for 30 bucks, but I had to import this from Poland, all right? So it wound up being like $50 after uh, after shipping, all right? So if I wanted to get the 450 and the 400 spring, I'd have to drop another maybe $100, all right? So that's what I would do. If I was going to keep this shock, I would buy a 400 and a 450 spring and then throw it on there and ride it and see which one I like, okay? But this 500-pound spring is way too stiff. Maybe there might be something wrong with the spring. Maybe it's not wound right. I don't know. Okay, so finding springs very difficult. All right, um, you, I can I can only find it from this one twenty uh, twenty six bikes in pi, pa, uh, in Poland. All right, I have to import it, so it costs more money for me to get it. All right, you you might be able to find some of these in the states, but not in this size. All right, is what I want to say. It's been very difficult finding parts for this shark. Okay. Okay, so yeah, the spring. Um, so is finding springs is difficult. Another thing I don't like is the um, the purchase okay um, the the purchase or at least the upper perch does not have a locking collar on it so uh, when I took this thing out for its shakedown ride this came loose <laughs> okay I had tightened it and so I made sure and tightened it a lot extra and and there's no I don't I don't know if this comes with a tool to adjust uh, or to tighten this tighten the spring but um yeah there's no there's no tool you can get in here and really crank down on this sucker okay now i do understand i i do understand mountain bike sh shocks are much different than motorcycle shocks all right motorcycle shocks you're supposed to be able to adjust the preload that's what all this threaded collar is for all right um on i guess on mountain bike shocks you're really only supposed to thread it in like three full turns and then that's it you don't do anything so so uh, Choosing your spring rate is very critical, all right? On a motorcycle shock, if, you, if you're if you adjusting this and you run out of adjustment, then that means you need to get a stiffer spring, all right? So that's that's that. I mean, um, at least the good thing is the this is cheaper than motorcycle springs. <laughs> motorcycle springs are like almost double the price of a, uh, a mountain bike shock, okay? All right, well, I don't really have any problem with the hardware, but when I installed the hardware... One of these, uh, one of these little spacers, the plastic donuts here, was the wrong size. I measured, I measured it, and I was like, "Well, I, try, I tried to install it first, and it wouldn't install." I was like, "That's weird. It's not. It doesn't fit." And then, uh, and then I checked all the, 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 I measured all the bushings, and one of them was off. All right, so quality control. All right, so the quality control of the Rock Shock shocks, not very good. Okay, <laughs> that's what I'm gonna say. Um, and then yeah yeah so the locking collar so this got loose on me and there's no way to tighten it more you have to hand tighten it all right that's the only way you can tighten it i don't know if there's any kind of special tool that you can use for this i don't think there is all right they, they want you to hand tighten this all right so if you hand tighten it there's there it it can come loose all right there's no locking collar on this all right okay yeah so another thing is interference all right and rubbing or clearance um so when i got this shock this was like this all right and i was wondering why is it like that like does this why does the spring why is that all rubbed up on there so what i did was i took a, a black paint pen and i colored in all that scratched marks all right and and yeah so there is some definite rubbing going on all right that is not normal okay um at least at least every shock that Hayes omega has had it doesn't do that all right now I could understand maybe mud or dirt or something a rock could have got stuck in there and then it could have been it could have been rubbing up on the shock body but I don't think that's it all right I think this spring is rubbing up on the shock body because if you look inside something is rubbing on something that's for sure all right Yeah if you look inside the spring 
it's rubbing on the shock body all right it's rubbing on the shock body somewhere yeah right here okay if you look carefully see that shiny stuff there yeah it's rubbing it's rubbing right here all right so i don't know maybe that's the way it's designed but i don't i don't like that you're your your spring should not be rubbing on your sh uh, shock absorber. <laughs> so I'll say, okay, that's a, that's that's not cool with 80s and bigger. All right, so so that's another kind of quality control issue. All right, so I am not impressed with the Rock Shock stuff. This this is actually the first Rock Shocks anything that Hayes and Mega's ever had, and I'm not impressed with it. Okay, <laughs> all right, rubbing. There, also, there's rubbing on the outside. So you look right here. See, this spring is rubbing on the reservoir here. You if you look at the reservoir kind of hard to see but yeah see right here you can see there it's rubbed off it's it, and it's really noticeable because the shock body is black okay um so that's another thing i don't like about this shock all right so i've had so many problems with it that i think we're just going to ditch it all right so um so the, those are the things hades mega doesn't like about it there's re there was really nothing i do like about it all right um, other than, yeah, it was pretty easy to install. Um, you can pretty easily install the spring. If you wanted to change out the spring, it's really easy, okay? Um, Hayes Mega, like I said, Hayes Mega could buy a softer spring and throw it in there and try it out, but I, I decided I think I'm going to go with something else. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep the stock one on there for now because it works. The the, the stock Fast Ace Shock works really good, all right? Um, I don't know what people complain about it. All right, I... I I think the DNM shock kind of sucks. I've ridden a bike that has a DNM shock. I don't like it. But the Fast Ace one, I got no problems with it, right? It's got a 450 pound spring. I think that's the proper spring for me, right? Um, so this is a 500 pound spring, and I'm 180 pounds without gear on. All right, so if you bought one of these, I would not suggest, and you're way about me, my my weight, <laughs> I would I don't suggest buying this spring, all right? I would get a 450 or 400, all right? But, yeah. So, just to, to reiterate why I don't like this shock. It's hard to find the springs, all right? The, okay, one of the good things they are, the springs are fairly inexpensive, but they're hard to find, all right, is all I want to say. However, the spring rubs on the shock body, all right? I don't like that, all right? There's a lot of rubbing going on the inside and outside of the shock, all right. Um, and you can you can see it on the spring, all right, and the shock body, all right. Um, sing, uh, single locking collar, all right. I think they should have a double locking collar because I saw that I caught this kind of getting loose on me, all right. I don't know. Maybe what you could do is maybe you could put some uh, some Loctite on the threads to keep it from backing out. But to really fix that, I would just put a uh, uh, it would be nice to have a locking collar here so like two 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 perches all right and then one perch would be to adjust the sag yeah well so one perch would be there for a, a, adjusting your sag and then the other perch would be to lock the collar in all right um i don't know why they can't have something like that all right i don't know what size this is i don't think this would be easy to find another collar okay um and then yeah um and it was just way, way too stiff for me, all right? Even with the 500 pound spring, I think 500 pound spring would have been just, should have been just right for me. All right, now, there could be something wrong with this. So uh, maybe, maybe there's something wrong with it, all right? But Hades Megas, I think I'm just gonna sell it, all right? While it's still in one piece. <laughs> and it still looks operational. What I might wanna do is take the spring off and then, and then, move it through the stroke to see if the shaft is bent or anything all right but the hardware seems like it's okay all right um it's got plastic bushings all right and steel spacers it's got these adjustments on it all right these they're adjusters the ones up here are easy to get to but this one is not so easy but that's how the fast a shock was fast a shock has an adjuster here and adjuster right here okay um, but it's a lot simpler uh, one thing I did like, uh, one thing that uh, I did find out over this versus the uh, Fast Ace Shock is that uh, the Fast Ace has like a three inch stroke, while this has a 3.5 inch stroke. So you get about an extra half inch of travel with this, all right? And I we found out 
that um, there is no interference with this on there. So um, you get a little more extra travel with this compared to a um, the fastest one, right? That was like a, when I measured it, it was like three three inches or something. So that's why I've decided I think I'm not going to stay with this. All right, I'm I'm going to look into something else. But for now, we'll stick with the fast stage shock. Okay, so that is Hayes Vegas review of the Rock Shocks Vivid R2C. I did not like this shock, um, so I'm going to go with something else. Uh, Rock Shocks has not um, impressed me at all. <laughs> so let's say, all right, Hayes Vegas out.